Hey guys, today we are going to be talking about an artist named Piet Mondrian. And Piet Mondrian created art using the primary colors. Our primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. And you guys know I've taught you this since you were little bitty people. And if you are one of my little bitty people, you have been learning this, that we can remember these primary colors by saying red like a fire truck, yellow like the sun, and blue like blue jeans. When we say red like a fire truck, we pretend to drive a fire truck. When we say yellow like the sun, we point to the sky. And when we say blue like blue jeans, we point down to our jeans. So it's red like a fire truck, yellow like the sun, and blue like blue jeans. For this project, I'm gonna give you two options. You can either do a drawing option. If you're doing a drawing option, you will need a pencil. You will need a black, yellow, blue, and red of either crayons or markers or color pencils. You get to choose. But those are the colors you're gonna need. The three primary colors and a black for your outlining. And you can do that with crayon or you can do that with marker or you can do a combination of the two color pencils if you prefer. If you prefer. And of course, if you like to paint, you can always do all your uh, drawing portions with a pencil and then fill in with your watercolor paints. And when your watercolors are dry, go back in and do your outlining with a Sharpie or a black marker. That's your choice. So, Piet Mondrian was a Dutch painter and uh, he started off painting really realistic looking trees and artworks and then he started slowly making his artwork look more and more abstract which means that uh, it didn't look real. So by the time he was done with his career, and if you're working with me through the Google slides, you've looked at lots of pictures of his artwork already, and you've watched a video of uh, his artwork. Um, so you have already seen all this and uh, seen examples of his work, but by the end of his career, most of his artworks were just rectangles and squares using the primary colors white and black and making different compositions or designs with the rectangles and squares on his paper or canvas using rectangles and squares using yellows, reds, and blues. Now, we are going to make a Piet Mondrian inspired drawing or collage. The first example I'm gonna do is the drawing. The sec second example I'm gonna do is the collage. If you're gonna do a drawing, what you need to do is first get a different piece of paper and cut it into squares and rectangles like I have here. It doesn't have to be colorful paper like this if you're doing the drawing, but you'll want a larger rectangle, maybe a couple of smaller rectangles, and a few different sizes of squares to use as drawing templates. When you uh, get to this point in the video, this will be a point to pause, go get a second piece of paper, cut some squares and rectangles out of it to use as drawing templates to trace. Okay, when you get ready, unpause, and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, when you're ready, what you're gonna do is you're going to take the different triangles, or sorry, triangles, rectangles and squares that you have cut. Miss Hoffman can't talk today. They're not triangles, are they? You're going to lay them down, and you're going to trace them. This is good tracing practice had kids that have a hard time tracing things without getting way off the edge. Tracing your hand is a good example of that. And this is good practice to trace and outline an object. So I'm gonna just take that re uh, rectangle and I'm gonna trace it with my pencil. Then I'm gonna move it somewhere else on my paper, lay it down, and I'm gonna trace it again. If you are doing this project strictly on my YouTube channel and you haven't looked at all my Google slides of examples of Piet Mondrian's artworks, you can have a parent or guardian help you look up a picture of his artworks to kind of get a visual representation of what they look like. Most of you have probably clicked on this from the link in my Google slides. So after I do a couple of rectangles, I'm gonna lay down a different rectangle or square 
and I want to have some overlapping. Overlapping means it overlaps, and so it's not just gonna be completely separate off to the side. We want some overlapping here and there. So I'm gonna take this, and I'm going to trace it. Okay, maybe have one right here. I'm going to do that in a few different places. Whoops. I just talked about not being able to stay right on the edges, and I just did it. All right. Now I might get a different side size. And trace. Make sure I'm in the camera here so you can see what I'm doing. Sometimes my camera bumps, and I don't realize it. And then you're going to just put these squares and rectangles overlapping in different ways all over the piece of paper. If I'm working too fast, you can always pause me. Get squares and rectangles and trace them. And I'm going to do just a few smaller ones. Maybe one up here. Now, Mondrian did a lot of realistic stuff in the beginning of his career, and then it slowly started becoming more and more abstract, which means that it did not look real. By the end of his career, he was doing pretty much strictly non-objective artwork. That means it did not have objects in it. It was just lines, shapes, and colors. And a lot of those artworks were rectangles, squares, lines, primary colors, just taking it very basic. And so you didn't look at it and see a tree like in his earlier artworks or a flower. It was all squares, rectangles, primary colors. And he ended up being one of the leaders of the modern abstract art movement because his art was something new and different that no one had ever seen. And some people look at it and say, well, my kindergartner could do a bunch of squares overlapping on a piece of paper and color them red, yellow, and blue. And that's right, they can. And that's what we're doing right now. And, but the point is, is he, it was innovative and different and it was something that had never been done before and people were interested in it. And so that shows you that it's good to try something new. Made Piet Mondrian famous for just squares and rectangles designed on a piece of paper. So what I'm doing right now is I am outlining all my pencil lines with a black marker so that they show up better. And now I'm gonna take my black marker and I'm gonna do a few lines going all the way down just to kind of give that boxed off design that is so classic of a Mondrian picture. So I just did some lines. Now I have a picture, and again, if you've clicked on this from the slideshow that has all the picture examples on it, you can see it's starting to look very much like one of his artworks. And if you're doing this straight from my Google, or from my uh, YouTube channel, again, you can look up some examples of his art. But now I'm gonna take my three primary colors you can do this with marker, with color pencil, with crayon, whatever you wanna do. I'm just gonna use crayon, and I'm going to color some of the sections in blue. And then, let's see, I'm gonna color in some of my sections red. do this big guy right here. And 
If you are using marker, you might want to color your sections in uh, before you do your black outlining because sometimes when you get the red marker right next to that black line, you got some bleeding over from the black line happening. But if you've already outlined it, just be careful not to let it bleed over. So I'm color that one in red and this one in red. And then I'm gonna want a couple of uh, sections yellow. So remember our primary colors are red like a fire truck, yellow like the sun, and blue light blue jeans. So I want a couple of sections yellow. Now since we're doing an artwork inspired by Piet Mondrian, we don't have to worry about the whole background being colored in. Now most of the time Ms. Hoffman's always telling you to finish out your artwork, color it all in, don't leave a bunch of empty space, don't leave a bunch of negative space, but with a Piet Mondrian inspired artwork, we do leave the background white. So it's okay in this one, guys. So we can leave the background white because most of his artworks had black and white in the background. So now we have a Piet Mondrian inspired drawing and all we did was trace some rectangle and square templates that we made and then outlined it with black marker and colored it in with the primary colors. And we have an artwork that looks just like a Piet Mondrian artwork. You're so fancy. Now, if you would rather do a collage, you can take a piece of paper. And for this one, I've already got mine pre-cut. You'll need skinny black strips of paper. You'll need a pair of scissors to trim them if they're too long. You will need, whoops, a glue stick. My chair is squeaky, guys, sorry. You'll need a glue stick or a liquid glue is fine. Just make sure that if you're using liquid glue, just use small dots of glue. And then you're going to want blue squares and rectangles of paper, red squares and rectangles of paper, and yellow squares and rectangles and paper. Same as when we were doing the drawing portion, red like a fire truck, yellow like the sun, blue like blue jeans. What we're gonna do, same type of concept, we're going to take the squares of paper, put glue on the back. For my little friends, we don't wanna put glue just all over the back because then there's nowhere for us to hold on to it. So what I do is I put dots of glue polka dots of glue everywhere and then that way there's places for my fingers to go and then I'm going to take it and lay it down and smooth it out then I'm going to take another put dots of glue and I'm going to make sure to overlap Take another. Notice I'm alternating between the reds, yellows, and blues. That way I have some from each of those primary colors on here. Make sure they're overlapping. And then make sure that when you put them down, you rub, after you put it down, you rub on top of it and press firmly. Now, I don't need to bang. I have kids sometimes bang the table. We don't need to pretend the table's a drum. We just need to rub it in place and that is plenty there. Overlapping with a little bit of yellow. And I think I want something up here. I got a lot of negative space up here. So I think I'm gonna do a little bit more blue up here. And if I have another one of those little yellow squares, I think I might overlap right there with that. So after I get this, and you probably will need to pause me because I worked pretty quick and I already had all those pre-cut. So when you get to this point, if you need to pause, just go ahead and pause. Then I'm gonna get my black skinny line or black skinny lines of paper and I'm gonna glue these down in different sections to look like the black lines that he typically painted on his work. So with these guys, we gotta be pretty careful not to get glue all over our workspace that we're using. We have to really use 
our glue line skills there to get on that black line. Let's see if I can get that line back up in the camera so you can see it. And then I'm going to find an edge of a rectangle and let that black line go straight through those shapes. Gives it that Mondrian look. And then where it is extra on the edges of the paper, as you can see, I'm just gonna take it and trim it. And trim it. Take those little scraps and throw them away. Now I'm going to put another couple going the other way. I'm gonna get my glue, edge my glue all the way across, and then I'm gonna take it and go find a edge of a rectangle or a square. I'm gonna go on that edge. Two more. Take my glue, glue line all the way across. I'm gonna do right here. That gets that one's and that one's edge. And one more. I cut this one really skinny. I hope I don't get glue all over my table, guys to do some cleaning and I'm gonna do this one I think right here against that edge whoops need a little bit more glue on that one there we go now it's sticking now I take it I trim my edges Get these little scraps over here for me to throw away in my scrap pile. And I have a Piet Mondrian inspired collage. And I can sound so fancy that I have learned about an artist, an abstract artist, and I am able to create works based off his works with just squares, rectangles, the primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, and a little bit of paper and some crayons. I hope you enjoyed doing this. If you made this, share it with me. I'd love to see it. Bye guys.